Japan's Kumano Koro is an ancient trail that dates back thousands of years. For centuries, monks, samurai, and emperors have made the pilgrimage across its 70 kilometers, up and down its thousands of meters of elevation. Today, Adventure Archives continues in that ancient tradition as we hike through forests and mountains, along old cobblestone paths and freshly paved roads, journeying through the wilderness from rural mountain towns to ancient shrines. After a long and incredible hike that started at Takajiri, we had spent the night in the town of Chikatsuyu. Now, we were splitting up, with Brian and Andrew following the original plan of taking a bus to Doyukawabashi to the start of the next day's hike. Meanwhile, Robbie and Thomas decided to go an extra 8 kilometers in the interest of seeing every shrine and site along the way. We had worked out a plan with potential spots where we could reunite along the trail, but until then, we were excited to see what was in store for us. It was the second day of our Kumano Koto hike. With an extra eight kilometers before us, Thomas and I had woken up at five in the morning to get a head start. Not wanting to wake up the others, we quietly got our snacks and gear sorted out for the day. Before heading out, we guzzled down some caffeine to give us a boost before the hike. And even though we were up extra early, our gracious host was up to see us out the door. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Sure. One, two, three. Okay. I know we're up really early, but this is unbelievable. Can you imagine? People here wake up to this every day. Holy cow. The trail led us along a small street. The dawn moon glowed through silhouetted power lines above. We walked by empty stores with glowing vending machines and closed down coffee cafes. And misty mountains surrounded us beyond the quaint little town. The grade of the street became gradually steeper now. We paused at a small shed to tie our shoes and prepare for the rest of the hike. We had a long day of hiking ahead of us, which felt a bit daunting after the exertion of yesterday's journey. How are your legs feeling? See, this isn't my usual backpack, because I wanted something I could take into the city, so my shoulders are actually hurting more than my legs are today. Well, let that view rejuvenate you. That's like out of a painting, like a Japanese painting right there. The path meandered further to the edge of town, leading us to more and more rural and natural landscapes. The trail now veered left, passing by a baseball field. That's a nice high school, particularly out in the country here. We were making great progress as the trail continued weaving through the town. We're about halfway to our next OG. I had a feeling because this section was a paved road that it wouldn't be all that difficult. And so far, that's seeming to be the case. There's a lot of uphill, but it's paved. Every so often, the trail would offer us a fantastic view of the misty mountains in the distance. We continued through the damp dawn air. We were now about 1.3 kilometers, or 0.8 miles, from the next shrine. We passed by a small cafe, and then followed the path to the edge of the forest. From here, the trail continued through the woods on a dirt trail. It's the dark and bleak woods if I've ever seen one. <laughs> as nice as it is to start early, the problem is all the spiders 
have had a chance to rebuild their webs from yesterday. So I got my whacking stick. I've already done a kilometer. It's more than a kilometer. We passed by a dilapidated, overgrown hut as the forest trail led us uphill. Then, we came to another road. We were a half kilometer closer to the next shrine. We had a quick snack, then followed the trail back onto the paved path. As we continued, we took in another view of the breathtaking mountains around us. It feels wrong to leave such a beautiful place. It's like I just want to stay there and soak it in. That's wild, dude. As much as I was saying, this place reminds me of the Smokies. You don't get those types of mountains in the Smokies. Those are distinctly Japanese mountains right there. We were making rapid progress and feeling quite optimistic as a result. I don't want to jinx it, dude, but we are booking it. We're probably going to have to wait at uh, the log for a long time <laughs> until they get here. It was 6.17 a.m., and it would still be over an hour before Brian and Andrew even got on the bus to make it to the start of their hike. We figured we would make it to our meeting spot well before them. Up ahead, we came to an overlook of the mountain range surrounding us. So we can see Okamidawa, Mikamori, Otome no Negao. That's Okamidawa. You can't see Mikamori. This one's unnamed. And then that right there is Otome no Negao. After taking in the mountain scenery, it was back into the forest where we saw a somewhat disconcerting sign. On July 12th, somebody spotted a bear, I think. Mm. Fun. <laughs> but before long, the path led us through another small rural town where we saw taro leaves growing in someone's garden. We also saw this stone plaque, which unfortunately neither of us could read. It's currently 7.23 a.m. And uh, if we're keeping to our original timetable here, that means Andrew and Brian should be just waking up and about to enjoy their bed and breakfasts. Breakfasts. I'm very happy with the decision we made. My only disappointment is that we did not get to experience the breakfast. Yeah, it was a very hasty and rushed morning for us. It was early in the morning, and as Brian and I packed up our gear, our generous host, Ike, had set up a wonderful breakfast for us. We got some hot coffee, iced coffee, and orange juice. Oh, that's good in the morning. Some thick buttered toast. Iced coffee? Mm, yeah. Well, wow, that's great. Oh, well, that toast is really good. Mm. So is the fruit. <laughs> Best hiking breakfast I've ever had. <laughs> it was the perfect breakfast. Light, nutritious, and plenty of carbs to give us energy for the day. Okay, Hisohara Oji. So this Fujiwara Teika character, he has been showing up in a lot of these. He must have just been one of the people who did a pilgrimage and actually had like records of it. At present, only a stone monument stands on the former side of the shrine. After visiting the shrine, we continued down the paved road surrounded by tall cedar trees. We passed by another shrine built along the moss-covered retaining wall to our left. There is a distinctly mystical ambience to our surroundings. Play a lot of The Legend of Zelda, and I always just kind of thought that was like a make-believe fairy tale land. Walking through this, I definitely see the inspiration, and if not, the carbon copy of some of that land. In, from that game here represented in Japan. We saw another post marking every half kilometer traveled as we made our way to the next shrine. Less than a kilometer for the next Oji. That's a stamp Oji and I think there's a bathroom there. You know what that says? No. It says toilet. <laughs> That's just what we need. <laughs> I needed to use the bathroom, but it looked like I'd have to hold it for a bit longer. Maybe that sign is out of date because 
I see no toilet. There's nothing worse than thinking you're close to a toilet and finding out you're not. <laughs> Literally, very few things worse than that. We hiked past a lodge with a strikingly blue roof before continuing along the paved path. 0.4 kilometers. The sounds of the chirping crickets added to the serene view of the distant, hazy mountains. But in spite of that, I was in a bit of a frantic moment looking for a bathroom. I hope this sign is not lying to me. All right, Thomas, this is where I leave you. I'll sit right here for you. Bye, Robbie. Good luck on your quest. Be free. Hey, I think it's down there. This is this one. 80 meters. Oh, okay. Well, I'll stay here. I'm here, Bobby, take the map. It's on the map. A short while later, Andrew and I were getting ready to leave the inn and head to the bus stop across the street. It was a clear, bright morning when we had left, and the sun was bearing down on us. We stood in the shade as we waited for our bus and took in our beautiful surroundings. Eventually, our bus arrived and we got on board. Now, it was a short ride to the Doyukawa Bashi bus stop. Check out this roof. Wow, that's the real deal. Wow, I can only imagine how long that would take to make that roof. Okay, this is Tsuki Zakura Oji. So Tsugi Zakura means grafted cherry tree, and this time the Munetada character, he saw a grafted cherry tree near here, and it was known for that for hundreds of years. Wow, look how big those trees are. Wow. We approached the shrine, and on the way, stopped to grab another stamp. We made our way up a steep set of stone stairs, which led to a shrine at the top. All right, I think it's time we make an offering for the long day that we have ahead. Got a few coins. We made our offering to the shrine, hoping it would bring us some good fortune. I wish that there's a nice cool breeze and that everyone is safe today. That's a good wish. Dude, look at these cypress trees. These are cypress trees, right? Stand next to that one so we can get a sense of how big that is. Hi, my name is Thomas Snart. I'm six foot three. How much do you weigh, Thomas? When I left 195, I'm probably down to 190 now. Now, we descended back down to the paved path. There, we came across what seemed to be a trail guide. We stopped at the kiosk containing the stamp for the Hidehira cherry tree we had read about earlier. The cherry tree is right here, I think. It's a full row. This must be the cherry tree. Is it all of these right here? I think so. It's, they said that someone planted a twig and that all of these cherry trees bloomed around it back in the late 19th century. Before we continued on, there was something I wanted to show Thomas. Oh, something cool over here, actually, you should see. First of all, this is a full-on bathroom with a bidet and a heated seat. But second, there's emergency use water right here. Oh, that is smart. Well, just seeing that bathroom, something's, something has inspired me. <laughs> okay, uh, we've received word from Brian and Andrew. They are on the bus on the way to Doyukawabashi bus stop. If the bus is on schedule, they'll arrive there in one minute. We told them to keep going once they get there and we'll catch up with them. With our pace this morning, I'm sure that will be in no time. So we'll meet up with them very soon. All right, you got my hiking pole? Yep. We just traveled twice the distance of Robbie and Thomas in like 10 minutes. Oh man. Now began the start of Daryl's original plan for us. From Doyukawabashi, we would hike to and cross a log bridge and continue on through the woods. It was time to start hiking. One good thing is that it's already cooled down in these trees. Yeah. Feels way better than it did out in the sun. <laughs> if we don't rendezvous with Thomas and Robbie up ahead, I think the 
plan for me and Andrew will just be basically slow and steady. Well, not necessarily slow, but steady. Nice, even pace where we don't really rush ourselves so that we can kind of conserve our energy throughout the whole hike and not burn out early. In this section, we had to take the Kumano Koto detour route, which went off the paved path and into the woods. We crossed the log bridge that was marked on the map and continued on our way. Well, now we have a little bit of uphill, but hopefully it won't be too bad. We'll see. I may have spoken too soon. It actually feels kind of muggy right now. Hopefully as we get higher in elevation, it'll cool off or a breeze will come by though. Unfortunately, we still have a bit of this uphill to go. It's not as bad as that first day, obviously, but... It's actually, I think, just as bad. Oh, really? I think it's steeper a little. What? Really? It, it shows as like a red incline oh, instead wow. of a yellow incline. Okay. It doesn't feel as bad. I mean, it doesn't feel great, but... <laughs> the view of the distant mountains kept us going as we trudged up the steep incline. Meanwhile, the others continued along their paved path. The trail again afforded us amazing views of mountain ridges as we hiked. We passed by various sites, including some planted hibiscus flowers being pollinated by a bee. And we saw a sign about another small creature. Yeah, so earlier I got one of those mountain leeches on my foot. I thought it was just a slug at first, and then I realized it was stuck to my skin and my sock. I pulled it off and it was fine. Um, that doesn't say anything about risk from deadly diseases, so let's hope that leeches don't have deadly diseases, but... We passed by another trail marker and sign pointing the way to the next shrine. In some sections, the street was wide, offering more views of the rugged wilderness around us. In others, it took us along abandoned and overgrown buildings, and even an ominous gated off tunnel. I'll pay you five dollars to hop the fence and go down as far as you can. Nope. Nearby, we came across a resting cicada, and we also saw a nice bit of trail magic further ahead. This right here? So let's put a hundred yen in the back. And get a nice cold cup. That is exciting. Oh man. It was funny too because I was just thinking, I was like, I hope there's a vending machine coming up soon. Look at those toys. Got nice little coffees in the water for a hundred yen. Ah, that's the morning right there. Mm. Meanwhile, the others continued trudging uphill. So Old Trail says that this is close to the same steepness as the beginning of our hike like yesterday. It doesn't feel nearly that bad. Don't get me wrong, it's a pretty strenuous incline, but up ahead looks rather daunting. <laughs> Though the uphill trudge was difficult, it rewarded us with beautiful views, and the humid jungle-like environment was teeming with all sorts of colorful fungi, mosses, and plant life. Oh. The views are at least kind of nice. Yeah. Good place to take a breather. Up ahead was a small rope gate leading further into the woods. We've just entered a very, very misty pine forest. Wow. It's completely, completely different feeling. Yeah. Just immediately changed. Wow. Oh. Whew. Well, I just got to the top. It was a nice, cool breeze. You can tell immediately the temperatures dropped when we walked in here. Yeah. This feels really good right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Wow, you are soaking. Yeah. I mean, I am too, but I think my material is better. My shirt's just completely wet. <laughs> As we were hiking, we found bright orange crabs, live crabs, crawling around on the damp forest floor. What in the world? There's another one over there. We'd seen some crab shells the previous day, 
but we were definitely not expecting to find any just living in the middle of the forest. Now, we took a quick, steep detour to Nakanogawa Oji. Down? Yep. Let's go meet up with the others. We continued hiking and passed the sign for the town of Shingu and also Hongu, where we would be spending the night. We passed a small shrine and we saw some more signs and markers meant for cars driving on this small street. The road eventually came across a tunnel whose color from murals contradicted its dark, overgrown, foreboding look. The Kamano Kodo continued past the tunnel. Although we were still hiking on a paved road, our surroundings felt unmistakably wild. Eventually we came to a small clearing with a building that might have been a martial arts center. Unfortunately, Andrew wasn't with us. This is like some post-apocalyptic Japanese hideout. The rusted signs, the rusty vans over here. This is the Kobiro Oji. Next up, Kumasegawa Oji. I think we're about to lose the main road here. There's mile marker 40. The sounds of crows set the mood as the trail finally led us off the road and onto a cobblestone path winding through the forest. As we hiked into the woods, we were extra aware of the various wildlife we might encounter. Yo snake, yo leech, yo bear, yo boar. But it turns out it wasn't the wildlife we needed to be worried about. No, I'm good. I'm good. Jesus. Uh, not good. Not good. Ow. Take a seat. Just as we had come to a perfect spot to rest, Robbie had twisted his ankle. Oh. What'd you do? Just twist your ankle? Yeah, twist it. It wasn't too bad, but it hurt. I have, I have a patch recovery here. And in the meantime, Andrew had an ankle situation of his own. Well, we just talked to some friendly hikers from Michigan, of all places, and they pointed out I had a leech on my ankle. <laughs> I just pulled it off, and I don't think it's a big deal, but that's a, a little bit freaky. Not used to dealing with leeches in the woods. I don't know, I think I preferred to tick still, but yeah, maybe I should have worn long pants today. We now made our way down from the peak of this hill. Lush forest vegetation surrounded us as we hiked through the cedar forest. This section of the trail is way nicer, just kind of a gradual downhill. Nice and cool forest. Things are looking much better right now. Is this a road? I don't know, but this is the trail. And just as the trail was easing up, the weather conditions started to change. Yeah. Well, we just got to this nice open area, but it started drizzling. I don't know if it's just there's less tree cover, but either way, I'm going to get my uh, rain pack on. I might just go without a rain jacket, though. I'm completely soaked. A rain jacket isn't going to do anything. Yeah, the rain jacket's kind of pointless at this, at this point. We rainproofed our gear, then discussed the plan. So it looks like we are not on the trail that's listed on all trails. We're currently on a detour route. So we're going to be heading down this road for a little bit, and then it should meet up with the trail again. Right. The sign is pointing that way, so I think we're in the clear. Yep. Let's go. Right. Yep. We followed the wide gravel road along the mountain and came across a pair of porta potties. So there's some toilets there, and I think this was one area we were considering doing a rendezvous, but it's still pretty early on in the trail. So the next time we see a pair of toilets, that's where we're gonna stop and meet up with Robbie and Thomas if they haven't caught up to us by then. I'm sure once they get over that hill, though, they'll make some good progress here. 
As we hiked, we were surrounded by nature's organic, rustic, and worn-out beauty on the one hand. And on the other hand, we frequently saw signs of mankind's interactions with nature. It looks like a Mario warp pipe with all that green moss on it. Wow, look at this jungle environment. While we hiked onward, the others were just finishing up resting. Robbie. Yeah. Depending how you're feeling, we can take this road and go down to the bus stop. Oh, I'm, I'm fine. You're fine. I just need to pay attention for the rest of the route because once you do it once, you're prone to do it again. All right, let's go. Up ahead, we saw a map of the trail. That's us. This is probably the bus stop that they got off at. As we progressed along the trail, we entered an area with an open grassy area bisected by a man-made channel. This area seemed to embody Japanese aesthetics with its clean, orderly structures overtaken by the natural greenery around it. We passed by a small resting area, then continued on back into the forest. Here, we came to a series of shrines. The trail also passed by a small cemetery nestled in the woods. Now, we made our way up a steep incline to Kumasegawa Oji. Eventually, we found the shrine. Up ahead, we saw a granite pillar marking one ri. A ri is a unit of measurement that is about how far a person can walk in an hour at a reasonable pace. It clocks out at roughly 3.93 kilometers. Ichi ri. I knew those had to be some sort of distance markers. Remnants of this re system are scattered along the old roads of Japan. Okay, we're gonna try to make some progress and catch up with Brian and Andrew so they're not waiting for us all day. 42. What did we start at today, like 20? 26. I don't regret doing this extra bit in the morning, but this is definitely gonna start to make us feel it. This is Waraji Toge Pass. This is the first of the high points oh, that great, we're gonna get great, today. Excellent. God, look how soaked my map is just through the sweat. We thought yesterday was humid, today is much worse. Look at this. You can actually see my sweat. That never happens. There's Waraji Toji. Then we have to go all the way back down to the log bridge. And we do the same thing again. Apparently Waraji are wooden sandals that would wear out very quickly, sometimes even in a day. And then according to locals, this is the pass where people who are starting at Chikatsuyu would change their sandals mm. because they had worn out by then. Wow. We headed down the pass and now we did have to worry about the wildlife. So a little after the pass up there, I felt this sharp sting in the bottom of my leg over here. And I look behind me, you've got this leech about this big, it's a little over an inch. Uh, I know you're supposed to like carefully pull them off, but I just started whacking. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're talking about. That is a little leech right there and he is looking for food. He will not find it today. Thomas, if you'd do the honors and stick that thing off of my leg. Here, I got it. There. It stands on its back leg right here and it just like walks with its mouth open and then tries to like grip onto anything that walks by. Oh. We passed marker 43 and now it was back to worrying about the terrain. When I was doing half dome in Yosemite, that was like controlled falling. I was having to hold onto the cable. This is much worse in terms of slipperiness, but not nearly as steep. I feel like I'm fighting for my life whenever I walk on one of these really slippery rocks going down the steep, steep stairs. Especially today, after a rain and intense humidity. Oh, I can see the road down there. Woo. Let me check. You stand still. Let me check. Scanning for leeches. <laughs> okay, there was a major crack in this mountain back in September of 2011. That was 12 years ago. So this detour apparently is semi-permanent. Yeah, I think we just follow this road down now. Okay. It's interesting, they said that this wasn't paved. And then uh, we should find that log bridge. From the log bridge, we go up and up and up and up, and that's gonna be the highest point we're gonna be at today. We passed by a section of road that had been damaged in a landslide. A mountain stream flowed beneath us, echoing into the trees above. The log bridge, which is up ahead, was our first possible meeting point with Brian and Andrew. They are past that at this point. And I'm assuming they are on their way to the top of this pass. And holy cow, that is high. 
That actually, I don't, can you even go up that? Yesterday we did a little over 10 miles. And today we've done 5.5 miles so far, which means we've done half as much as we've done yesterday. We didn't have nearly as much steep uphill as we did yesterday though. So I would treat the rest of this hike like we're just starting the hike again tomorrow or hike again yesterday. Okay, yeah, once we get to the log pass, let's mentally prepare yeah. and be like, this is the start of today's hike. Yeah. This was a little morning workout before the hike. <laughs> We now approach the bridge from the opposite direction that Brian and Andrew had come from. All right, well, that is the log bridge. So in theory, we're about two hours behind. Okay, we can make that up. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break, grab a snack, and then uh, get on our way. But as we pulled out our snacks, it was back to worrying about the wildlife. Is that just a horse fly? I think it's a fly, yeah. Although it looks like it's got a big butt. So most of those things bite, they don't sting, right? All right, just let me eat my cookie. Let me eat my cookie in peace. I like how we're on opposite sides. So if one of us suffers, the other doesn't have to. <laughs> okay, we gotta get out of here. There is a horse fly that just will not leave us alone. Log bridge. You know one thing, Brian and Andrew went first, so they probably cleared the spider webs for us. Thank you for your sacrifice. Brian and I were actually a decent way ahead of where the others thought we were. We were following a wide gravel road through the woods. We had a quick snack break. Now onward on the Kumanokoro detour. The road now transitioned into a forest path which eventually led us to what seemed like an old abandoned rest area. Here, we saw a sign which seemed to have the names of past pilgrims listed on it. So that sign said something about water, mouth, king, dragon. I'm wondering if it's because of this. It looks like this uh, dragon-shaped thing used to have water coming out of it. We paid our respects at the nearby shrine and paused to take in all the details of the small stones and statues surrounding it. After that, we continued on. The trail led us over a narrow bridge that spanned across a calm stream. The trail led us through a patch of cedars, where we saw abandoned structures and other peculiar artifacts. Then we came to another shrine, Yukawa Oji, once a higher ranking shrine, surrounded by lodgings able to accommodate hundreds of people. And on the ground nearby, we saw the fruits of a seven certosia, a type of parasitic wild orchid that grows native here. We now continued uphill through the cedar forest, as we hiked, something else added to the difficulty of our steep trudge. These huge bees keep following us around. So even if we want to stop for a break, we feel like we have to keep going to just avoid them landing on us and stuff. <sighs> Eventually, the persistent uphill rewarded us. Flat ground up here. Oh. That is... A thing of beauty. Well, I can't tell if that's natural or man-made. That's got to be man-made, right? There's just some cracks in it that, and wear and tear that make it look like it's almost natural. But yeah, that's definitely man-made. It's crazy. The trail again came to a steep incline. As we hiked, we saw a small hydrangea plant growing from the soil. We also saw ants scurrying across a partially rotten log. <sighs> Eventually, the steep trail led to a flat, paved path. Thought I'd never be so happy to see a road. <sighs> oh man, the relief. Let's uh, maybe check the map and take a quick break. We followed the paved path, passing by another distance marker. Here, we saw a small gate marking the entrance to the next section of the trail. So I think those are the bathrooms over there where we're supposed to rendezvous with 
Robbie and Thomas, but we're gonna take a little break here and I'm gonna check the map just to make sure we're in the right spot. Oh man, I'm very sweaty. That uphill was exhausting and there were bees chasing us the whole time, but this is good relief. Taking a much needed break at the shelter, we decided to review our plans to see if this was indeed where we were meeting the others. We've done like maybe a third of the whole thing. That's uh, what we do today, yeah. Not including what? <coughs> the bus part. No. Oh, you know what? I don't think this is where we are meeting up there. Oh, this is the one we're at here. Okay, so this is not the rest stop where we're meeting them. The bathrooms we passed earlier were where we were considering doing a meetup, but that was way too early on the trail. We are now at these bathrooms in the middle of here and our actual meetup point, which is at these next bathrooms on the map. Unfortunately, I think we still have some, a couple of uphills. It's gonna be downhill from here for a while, but then there's another pretty decent uphill and then another short, brutal one right before the end. So, yeah. So today's hike is definitely longest in terms of distance. We still have, what, like six and a half miles, you said? Mm -hmm. The good news is it's only about 10 a.m. or so. So we're doing pretty good on time. For now, I'm gonna get some much needed food in me. So we've done about three miles. Three miles, really? Yeah. Jeez. That's it? <laughs> yeah. We were a bit disappointed, as we had thought we had made more progress. But nonetheless, the sun came out, and we made sure to stop and enjoy our beautiful surroundings. Cicadas chirped as dragonflies darted about in the warm glow of the sun. Eventually, it was time to head back onto the trail and continue on. Water cascaded down a rocky slope near the trail, pouring water into a rushing mountain stream below. The peaceful forest was dappled in sunlight, filtered through the cedar canopy above. As we made our way on, the others were retracing our earlier steps up a steep trail. As we hiked, we came across a rope fence on the trail. Please close the fence after you pass. We passed under the fence, curious why it was there. Maybe it just discourages some animals. Our uphill hike was made harder by the current weather conditions. It's not just me, this is more humid than yesterday, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think it could get any more humid than yesterday. Plenty of switchbacks, but each uh, uphill is very steep. I imagine Brian and Andrew did not enjoy this section. We can share stories once we get there. You think uh, we were a little overconfident in how quickly we could get to this part of the trail? Yes. <laughs> I thought we would have been to this section earlier. The actual difficulty of this section is about what I expected, which is to say, very difficult. My answer was yes, but only slightly. I think I thought we were making good time. Not as good, but we are slightly behind. Oh, big bee. Um, bee or hornet? I'm not sure, I'm gonna keep moving. Where is it? We picked up the pace to get away from the bees and came to a clearing in the forest. Yeah, we're really in the thick of it right now. Yeah, this is... This is a jungle. If you look at those mountain sides, we're just in that same thickness only on this side. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, almost there. Yes, we're getting real close to the top now. Woo! My goodness. Oy. At what point does your body just stop sweating? And, Death. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> the mountain views around us were beautiful, but we didn't stop too long to look at them and instead continued hiking on. We got another fence up ahead. Yeah. Almost there. He said, almost there. 
15 minutes ago. I mean, depending on how you look at 15 minutes is almost there. <laughs> Considering we've been hiking for four hours today. Okay, we made it. Oh, see, almost there. Almost there. And we're here. I think so anyway. Leech check. Okay. Yeah, leech check. Oh, 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 oh. Here, move and take three Whoa. steps forward. That's just an earthworm. Oh, this is an earthworm? Oh, yeah, that scared me. <laughs> We continued onward at a steady pace, curious how far ahead the others were. So yesterday, we were talking about our plan for today. We've had such good cell signal this entire trip that we were almost ready to just be like, well, once we get there, we can contact each other. We made a plan that in case we didn't have cell signal, we had a meetup point that is still maybe four kilometers ahead. And we don't have cell signal right now. So it was actually a really good thing that we did that. I assume that they're sticking to the plan. We're sticking to the plan. And I'm very impressed. They made much more distance than I would have expected. If they're motivated for the same reasons that we are, maybe they're like, let's get out of this leech infested forest <laughs> as fast as we can. We now came to the open gravel road Brian and Andrew had oh, stopped at earlier. Woo. Wow, good to be out of the jungle. We're still on track, detour route. Just a bit further, we came across the porta potties the others had passed by. I assume Brian and Andrew came around here. Here, there was also a large source of potable water that we had no need to partake in it. So I brought three liters of water yesterday and three liters today. Yesterday I was totally fine on water and today so far I'm totally fine as well. It's looking more and more likely we're just gonna meet up with them at the fallback meeting point, which is fine, but a little surprising. Next stop is Jagata Jizo. Let's take a look at where our meetup point was. Okay, this is where they got off the bus stop. This was our first potential meetup point at the log bridge. This was the high point of this detour pass. That bathroom we just passed was our first potential meetup point. We didn't see them there. They were supposed to just keep going. Uh, our next major landmark is Jagata Jizo. That's the first stamp point of the day. No, first mm -hmm. stamp point of the detour pass. And then, our next meetup point is way over here at this gate. So if we don't see them along this, we will see them at that gate. Cool. Okay. All right, let's go Let put this way. There's gotta be some significance to that hole there. I wonder if it was another kiln or something. I see some bottles throughout this whole trip. I wonder what they're for. We now found ourselves back in the forest. We pass by an old building and approach Jagata Jizo. All right, let's give a let's give an offering for this one. You know what I was wishing for? Yeah. All the flies to stop bothering us. So this statue talks a little bit about saving some of your lunch to ward off malnourishing daru spirits, which are serpent-like spirits that suck you of your energy. Very appropriate. Yeah, this, this fly is... I will sacrifice some of my lunch to get rid of this fly. Past the shrine, we grabbed another stamp before continuing on. We now crossed over a narrow bridge that felt a bit precarious. Yep. Whoa. After crossing over, we pass by an abandoned building in a clearing. What is this? It almost looks like a camping spot. This looks like where you pull the master sword out. There's actually a slit in the rock here of the log. Go for it, pull it out. So this is the Dayukawa Hamlet, the place of the origin of the Yukawa clan. It dates back to the Kamakura, to Muramachi, and Azuchi Momoyama periods, which is 1185. We got mile markers again. Well, half kilometer markers. 51. We're going to 59. We were now four kilometers from the meeting spot. Yukawa Oji. 
visited Kumano in October of 1081. Whoa. This was rebuilt in uh, 1983 though. Now, we paid our respects at the shrine. And after that, we collected the corresponding stamp. This is the last uphill that we need to do for the rest of the trip. Today. For the trip today. <laughs> you know, we haven't seen anybody in a long time. There's two people who passed us this morning, and then another group of three. Nobody else. It's 11 o'clock right now. Yeah. So, I almost imagine that a lot of people skipped that beginning section with the bus, so. the same way Brian and Andrew did. I mean, we've been on the right path this whole time. It just doesn't feel like it. it feels a little weird. In the meantime, Brian and I continued through the forest, this time on a greatly appreciated downhill. So after checking the map a bit, I think the couple of uphills we thought were gonna be ahead, we might actually be able to bypass because we're doing the detour route, I believe. Once we get to the next bathrooms, it's mostly downhill from there. And so far, it's just been downhill from that last bathroom. So with any luck, the rest of the trail shouldn't be too bad. But yeah, we still got a decent distance to cover, about like, I don't know, five or six miles. So I'm gonna keep on trudging. Water rushed below us as we hiked, and nearby, we saw evidence of past human intervention. So there must have been a pretty decent settlement here, because you can see all of these man-made wall structures or foundations along this hillside here, like even all the way over there. And obviously its proximity to the river, you know, benefits the location. So yeah, the sign says that there's a small settlement named Michinogawa, and there were 17 households in the late 19th century, the early Meiji period. They decided that eventually this place was unsustainable, and they eventually moved everyone to the Kumano Hongu Taisha area. Former residents of this area still come here for local festivals. As we hiked through the forest, we passed by the rubble of old buildings. Then we came to a vast, sunny clearing. Holy crap. What is this? <laughs> it was likely here, in this spacious opening, that the aforementioned festivals were still held. From here, we could see the forested hilltops opposite us. Nearby was also a small stream that trickled through scattered stones. So I'm not 100% sure, but I mean, based on the way the terrain looks, this is clearly where they would farm and grow food, but these areas here probably were used for growing rice in the rice fields. The because Yeah, the terrace shape. And then probably as you go up there, where you've got the wooden fences, that's probably where they just grew other things. All right, I think I'm going to leave Robbie and Thomas a small subtle sign that we've been here. Just arrange some sticks into a double A. Let's we'll see if they notice that. <laughs> we re-entered the forest, and through the trees we could see a massive concrete dam. We also saw a Nico frog, also called a montane brown frog. Meanwhile, Thomas and I continued on, passing by an empty clearing. There's definitely a structure that used to be here. It's like terraces here. Yeah. It's kind of hard to fathom, but if people were hiking this in 1083, that means that this trail has been around for almost a thousand years. And that's assuming that 1083 was one of the earliest dates. You know, I am legitimately impressed with Brian and Andrew. For them to have gotten this far ahead, even with a head start, that means they're really moving today. Yeah, one of the two. Maybe Ike at the hostel really gave them a good breakfast. <laughs> said we got one more little push out of this forest. I hear people. 
keep going. We trudged up one more hill, and we were filled with relief as we came to a paved road. Oh. I got a surprise for you. Okay. Whoa, what's this? 53. Well, I suppose it's possible. Brian and Andrew are here. I don't see their packs. We took a quick look at the nearby shelter, which was packed with a tour group. Well, still no sign of Brian or Andrew. This is not our meeting point, so it's no problem, but I just kind of think that they found a bus stop because for them to get this far ahead seems unlikely. All right. Significantly cooler here. Woo. Very nice. Now, it was back into the woods, where the trail was thankfully either downhill or flat. 54. Wanting to keep a steady pace, we kept our heads down and continued trudging through the forest. Oh my gosh. Whew. All right, 55. That was a long half kilometer. Yeah. We've been uh, hiking for almost six hours now. Almost, almost nine miles. Meanwhile, Andrew and I continued through the woods, and we came across a pair of signs. We're actually going to go down these stairs, down to Hoshimanoji. And that's where we're going to meet up with the others, and that's where we could potentially bus out if we felt like just bussing to the town, but I don't know, we'll see how we feel. We headed down some cobblestone stairs, which led to a more open area where water flowed through a series of moss-covered concrete canals. The landscape here made us recall a previous trip we had taken. When we were in Harper's Ferry and we said the canal kind of looked like Japan, it's kind of what we were talking about, this sort of thing. Although the bare concrete walls of the canal had an almost brutalist quality to them, they somehow perfectly complemented the untamed, overgrown wilderness surrounding them. Like the ancient ruins before them, the metal, concrete, and wood that made up these structures would eventually succumb to the forces of nature. Just as water smooths and erodes stone, everywhere were signs of the forest adapting to and reclaiming human engineering. So we just ran into two people, Mike and Kyle. They said that uh, Brian and Andrew were about uh, 20 minutes up ahead. That means it's probably going to be, what, 30, 40 minutes before we catch up with them. We'll probably meet them at that spot, just as they're getting there. Um, also, look, there's all these ruins and foundations here. Old bell. Old Whoa. What is, is this? These are the ruins of the... Michi no Kawa Settlement. Michi no Kawa Settlement. <laughs> In the late 1900s, Looks like there was some concerns about rapid depopulation in Japan. And so, uh, as part of a government incentive, many of the people here moved out in 1973 to repopulate other areas nearby. Whoa. Where are we now? I don't know. As we continued through the grassy clearing, I spotted something exciting on the trail. Oh. We got a message from the guys. Oh ho ho! Awesome. Ha! <laughs> hey, leave no trace. That is very exciting. That means we're gonna meet up with them soon. We continued on, and the trail led us away from the sunny opening, returning us to woods. Oh crap, back into the forest? Someone's down there. It's just a hiker. It's not Brian or Andrew? No. Okay, another quick update. We just passed another hiker who said Andrew and Brian went down from that little settlement two minutes after her, which means they are getting close. We now entered the same section of the trail that was crisscrossed by concrete channels. We kept hiking at a steady pace, eager to reunite with the others. We were still further ahead on the trail and kept hiking onward. 
pausing occasionally to enjoy the riparian scenery around us. We soon approached a clearing ahead on the trail where our rendezvous point was. Meanwhile, we had a distinct feeling that we would soon be seeing the others on the trail. I don't know if that's them or not. But I thought I saw some shirts. So let's let's go. You ready? Okay, yeah, I don't see anything yet, but I'm getting optimistic. They were by that sign. Okay. So Alright, right behind you. We continued onward, picking up the pace a bit in the hopes that we might catch up to the others. Sneak up on him. Unbeknownst to us, Robbie and Thomas were sprinting towards us in the background of this shot. shouldn't have run. <laughs> How exhausted are you guys? Pretty tired. Yeah. We need a break at where we were supposed to say we were taking a break. Yeah. 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 How are you guys? Pretty oh, good. good. This we're guy's good. so slow. <laughs> filming Andrew's up. slow? Because he's filming like, he only got like 20 shots of the river. <laughs> Dude. I was amazed at the progress you guys were making. Yeah. Oh really? Like even with the head start, I was surprised like your typical pace. Andrew, you look like you've literally been swimming. Oh yeah, my, this is no, soaked. Our clothes oh. has been, have been <laughs> soaked since since we started and it's not gonna dry off. <laughs> you guys got a frontal just now. We tried to like run into it. <laughs> Andrew stopped recording before we could. I was like, I, I know that orange shit anyway. <laughs> oh, like Andrew, you, your, your ankle. ankle. Oh yeah, I got a leech yeah, on there. There was a leech. There was a leech, yeah. yeah. Did you guys get leeches? Yep. Really? Yeah, we yep, just got yep. a leech. One right Although here. it didn't bleed like that, damn. No, damn, dude. I think okay. that's the sweat. The sweat is just making it look bad. It's so weird, where did the leeches come from? Oh, the oh, we found crabs. Oh, really? Multiple crabs, yeah. Like, they're real. All the stories you've heard, they're all true. <laughs> <laughs> all the one story. <laughs> so on the ground, there's two types of spiny balls. One is chestnut, which we saw yesterday. And the other is a tree much more familiar to the U.S., which is sweet gum. I don't know if it's the exact same species. I'm sure it's something different, but the seeds and the leaves all look the same. But it's uh, a bit hazardous if you're going barefoot, but none of us are, so <laughs> should be good. If you're going barefoot in this leech forest, <laughs> good on you, dude. <laughs> Me and Thomas decided that any forest that has leeches and crabs is automatically a jungle. <laughs> yeah. No, this feels like a jungle. For it sure. sounds like it, too. <laughs> Did you guys stop and rest at that one bathroom that had a nice little sitting area? Barely. Barely. There's a big tour group there. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. If you guys had walked in there, you probably would have seen our butt spots on the fence <laughs> still. All right, so this is the bathroom where we were rendezvousing. So, oh, yeah, so we basically perfect rendezvous. timing. Yeah. 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 Woo! -wee. Want to take a sitter? Yeah. Let's take a full sitter. Were you guys just huffing it the whole way? Yeah, we were booking as hard as we could. Finally reunited, we all sat down to rest and enjoy some snacks. Woo! Oh. So this is you guys' first break? Mm-hmm. Like first substantial break. Wow. Man. Man, this morning we got on the bus and we saw us pass you guys and go twice the distance you had already gone and we're like, oh man. <laughs> so 
Me and Thomas have hiked six hours and 17 minutes, 11.31 miles according to my watch. Wow. Which is more than we did all day yesterday. Not time-wise, but distance-wise. Yeah. yeah, we were saying, uh, Robbie and I overestimated your ability. No, no, no. we hike. overestimated our abilities and yeah. underestimated yours. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. There were some brutal I thought we were going really slow. Yeah. Really yeah, no, I'm impressed. I feel like you guys maintained a good pace. Oh, you guys didn't see the double A I left at the settlement, did you? You did? Oh, nice, mm -hmm. nice. Back together again. Yeah, this is Shitori Choco, which I thought meant moist chocolate. Like, they seem very hard. Are these just old? Maybe it means crispy. Did you guys just notice the leeches? We had the leeches before you even got to the bus stop. But you noticed them on your own, or? Mm -hmm. you, we were like hiking uphill and then we got to the top of that like pine yeah. forest area. And then the guys from Michigan were like, you have a leech on you. I was like, oh. Oh yeah, I texted you guys, watch out for leeches. Oh, yeah. We didn't get that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad we made a meetup up plan. plan. Yeah, because we didn't have signal like the whole day. Still don't. I mean, it's, it's funny how it all worked out anyway, but. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely good we made that plan. Anyone want some animal cookies? <laughs> yeah, do you want some sheep toady chocolate? <laughs> That's gotta be crispy. Oh. These are not moist, they're crispy. Not bad. Yeah. I haven't had animal crackers. Oh, in. those chocolates are really good. Yeah, those chocolates are very good. They are kind of moist. Weirdly. Well, I did not realize how hungry I was until just now. I feel all the hunger pain. <laughs> yeah. One of the uphills, we just beasted through it because they were just like, bees buzzing around us the whole time. <laughs> oh yeah. That was a break I needed so badly. Good God. Can't imagine all that you guys went through on top of the hike we just did. Well, it's funny because you look like you've been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just that bloody leech, literally. It's just nice that the last two miles were pretty relaxing. <laughs> Otherwise, we probably would have been way more tired. <laughs> we passed by the concrete dam and found our way to Funatama Jinja. Here, red torii gates mark the entrance to the shrine, which was guarded by the statues of foxes, or kitsune. While we hiked on, we discussed the journey so far. So were you guys surprised that we hadn't met up with you earlier? At first I was a little surprised because I thought you guys would make quick work. But the further we got along, the more I was like, eh, got a pretty decent head start with that bus. <laughs> I was surprised only after I found out you guys didn't really take any breaks. I did stop Andrew every so often and be like, if they pass us, they, we would have to see them, right? They, there's no other way they could get in front of us. Like, oh, maybe they're just waiting at Hoshiman Koji somehow. <laughs> I kept like postulating. I was like, okay, maybe they went and took a bus. Okay, maybe they passed us somehow. Okay, maybe they never made it up. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, we're just still sleeping at the guest house. <laughs> we're like, oh crap, we, we have to bus all the way to Hoshiman Koji. <laughs> <laughs> Once I saw the AA on the ground, I was like, yes. I've got the energy left to do this. <laughs> yeah, in hindsight, we should have left a sign sooner, like maybe at that top toilet, you know? Oh, yeah. But I didn't really think about it. We probably wouldn't have found it, so that's all right. Yeah. We spotted a Japanese skink on our way to the next trail junction. This is where we go, right? Onahana Oji? Uh-huh, yep, yep. The path led us off the road and into the woods yet again, where we collected another stamp at Inohana Oji. Here, stone pillars stood near a small statue of a monk, surrounded by a pile of rocks. We were about seven kilometers, or over four miles away from the town where we were staying for the night. The trail twisted and turned around small hillsides, leading us through tangles of trees, before finally leading us back to the road we had started on. Could we have just done the road the whole way? Probably. Oh, you know what? We had to get the shrine, though. Yeah, uh, Brian's like, I've already not done the entire trail. I don't need to be a purist. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> One thing I will say is that these trails are very clearly marked. It is like very nice to have all these clear signs. We passed by some interesting geology as we hiked. And in the distance, we also spotted some man-made structures dug into the hillsides. The 
trail again changed from an easy, flat road to a steep uphill trudge through the forest. In the distance, we saw signs of civilization through the trees. 61. The path that led us to Hoshinman Oji, a large shrine along a road. This shrine is sometimes considered a gate of awakening of the aspiration to enlightenment, and marks the outermost entrance to Hongu Taisha, where one of the grand shrines of the Kumano Koto resides. We grabbed another stamp from the shrine, and after taking some time to rest up a bit, we continued along the road. Here, we entered a more developed area. Okay, interestingly, we have two different versions of the map. One says there's a vending machine up ahead, the other does not. Unfortunately, it looks like the newer one. Unfortunately, it looks like the newer one says there is no vending machine, so I don't know, we'll find out. <laughs> oh, could be. I see a house. Oh, that looks promising. A little vending machine over there. <laughs> we passed by another trail marker and excitedly made our way to the vending machines. Start getting your drink orders ready now. <laughs> oh, the bus. You know, if a bus comes in like the next 30 minutes, we can consider it. <laughs> Ooh, I'm starting off with orange. Oh yeah, that orange one looks good. Chungus. Cheers. Cheers. Reunification. <laughs> Reunification. Man, that's good. Oh, there's like icy bits in here. Oh, oh it's pulp. It's pulp. I try oh, it's pulp. Yeah. Oh, that's good, yeah. That's a good choice. And that's fizzy. Yeah. I should mix those two. Pour a little in here. Mm. Mm. More. I'll share. I'll share. More. More. Okay, okay. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Near the vending machines, we saw some planted hydrangea bushes with strikingly colorful flowers. There were also some delicately pink hibiscus flowers. And a little down the way was another interesting plant. You know, are these persimmons again? Uh, uh yeah. yes. Yeah, these look like more of the fuyu variety, which are flatter and a bit crunchier. Also tasty, but the longer, softer ones are my favorite. Look at these uh, scare tigers. Well, those are actually pretty scary. Fire a rabbit. Nice little town. Yeah. Wow. I can see how Zelda got its inspiration. <laughs> After passing through this quaint rural town, we came across a small shrine with another statue of a bodhisattva sitting on a lotus flower. The statue depicted Prince Shotoku, who reigned from 593 to 622, and who was a devout supporter of Buddhism. We passed by stands of cedar trees interspersed with thick bamboo. The path led us to another small town, complete with a beautiful view. It was amazing to think how far we had traveled so far. Maybe this is kind of the whole point, but all I know now is walking. I've been walking for so long today, and for so far. It just seems like that's my entire existence. Further into town, we saw a man-made pond with koi and goldfish swimming inside. And pollinators took advantage of the various flowers that had been planted along the road. We continued following the path through the beautiful rural town. We passed by an old field of lotus plants as well as a roadside stand with carved wooden totems. We also saw a statue of a three-legged crow, a symbol in Chinese, Korean, and Japanese mythology that has become the symbol of the Kumano Kodo. We continued following the paved path and came to another half kilometer marker. We had 11 more markers before reaching our destination for tonight. Cedar trees towered above us as we continued down the small road. 
Well, these seem to be the same cedar trees that we've seen in other areas. And I believe they have been planted a long time ago just to reforest the hillsides, if I'm not mistaken. But eventually, the trail led us out of the forest and into an open area that almost felt like a suburban neighborhood, complete with neatly manicured lawns. Just off the trail was a curious sight that added to the feeling of being in a surreal suburban neighborhood. I mean, this looks like a swimming pool, but ain't nobody swimming in that. All of these environments feel like something my brain would come up with in a dream, you know what I mean? I think I know what you mean, Andrew. The routes here almost look like they don't make sense. Like you're like, how could this connect to that, connect to that, you know? Strange as it was, we were still on track. Up ahead was another stamp to collect for the Mizunomi Oji Shrine. Further ahead on the trail was an out of place looking pavilion. We decided to head to it to take a breather. As it turns out, these were the abandoned grounds of the Misato Elementary School. And they just so happened to be a few meters from the Mizunomi Oji. Six kilometers. 75 minus 67. Yeah, six kilometers. The sounds and sights of summer, combined with the strange aesthetic of the abandoned pavilion, added to the dreamlike feeling of this place. Eventually, we got a move on, though we were taken aback by how little distance we had covered compared to what it felt like. <laughs> They're like five kilometers in a mile. There's only, <laughs> like, there's not even two. It really felt like we had been walking since time immemorial. I walk, therefore I am. <laughs> I'm Ken. My job is walking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With a relaxed downhill trail through the woods, we started covering a decent amount of distance, passing by various small shrines as we went from one distance post to the next. And as we approached the forest edge, I spotted a familiar but surprising plant. I would not have expected to see this in Japan. These are pawpaw trees. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, it's certainly the climate for them, but I didn't know they grew here, and I don't even know if they're native or not. I'll let the narrator fill us in. Doesn't look like a good location for fruiting, though. Yeah, too much shade. That was crazy. As it turns out, in some rural parts of Japan, people have simply taken up growing pawpaw for its fruits. They're native to our hometown in the Midwest, but are introduced in Japan. We were nearing another shrine with a stamp. But first, we had to pass through another small town. Here, there was some sort of kiosk with piles of lumber. And a tour group followed us as we hiked and observed some of the plants growing here. It's so cool seeing all the different wild edibles growing in these towns. On one of those hedges, we had some wild chives growing. Actually, I don't know if they're wild or planted. They very well may be planted. All sorts of herbaceous plants and flowers grew in the nooks and crannies of this town. As we made our way through the sun-soaked village, we were treated to a view of the forested hills. And further up on the street was a small stand selling homemade ume, or pickled plums. We continued hiking. Up ahead was another ume stand next to a vending machine. And it seemed someone had dropped a coin below a grate in the street. You can get that. A coin or two. You could easily get that. 100. None of this animal goes to waste. We donated the loose change to the ume stand, then bought some drinks. How's that Fanta? Normally, if you put a Fanta in front of me, I'll be like, meh. Put a Fanta in front of me now, I'm like, <laughs> Dragonflies darted about in the hedges along the street, adding to the tranquil summer atmosphere of this rural town. That scarecrow looks like the one from near a meal. As we meandered on through the town, we also came across some resting goats. Also nearby was a helpful sign showing where we were and how much we had left to hike. So this is, says where we are right now. It says Hongu Taisha, that's where we're going. And it says about how long? Four kilometers. Oh, that's man. close, right? Yeah, that's, that's not too bad. It's like three, 2.6 miles or something. What's another four kilometers after nine hours of hiking? <laughs> <laughs> Although the town was quite beautiful, we had entered a trance-like state where all we could focus on was putting one foot in front of the other. I have reached a state of something. I don't think it's nirvana or anything. 
There is no more desire left in me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that is nirvana. <laughs> yeah, it's not true. I desire to not be walking still. The trail passed through a small meadow where an empty stand had been set up. This looks like a fun little shop when it's open. Further up was a kiosk with another stamp situated next to a cafe. We took a moment to rest, then checked out the Fushiogami Oji Shrine that was just up a small nearby hill. Some colorful russula mushrooms grew from the soil a few feet from the shrine. We continued on where we saw a cooler full of water bottles for sale. Oh, it is cold. Made in Japan. Pure forest. <sighs> After that, we continued on, now just three kilometers from town. The path led us back into the forest, which greeted us with flat, easy terrain. I will say this is a great final leg of the trail. Like as far as the softness of the ground, this is very flat, very soft. Nice little smooth welcome into town. This is even nicer than a paved road. Softer yeah, yeah. and everything. Here and there, we passed by small little shrines. And we also saw a log covered in small, colorful Ganoderma mushrooms. You know what's funny about the end of a long hike? Is that by the end of it, you literally don't care what anything looks like how beautiful anything is. He's like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't have the energy to care. Although fortunately, this section of the forest is basically just the trail. So I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I know we talked about this earlier, but it's a very kind ending so far. Just yes. soft, steady steps. We now passed over a well-constructed bridge. Our destination wasn't much further now. Dare I dream that it's only 2.1 kilometers, is it true? We passed through a modest wooden gate before continuing through the woods. Though we were nearing our destination, it seemed the trail still had some uphill left for us. But these well-built cobblestone steps made it a little easier on the feet. And soon, we were only one and a half kilometers away, just under a mile out. Okay, what's the state of our morale right now? I think we're all exhausted. I have every right to be exhausted. You guys have even more every right to be exhausted. <laughs> I, I'm in a state where if I stand still, the pain is just gonna set in. So I'm keeping my legs bent. I'm just walking. State of morale? Negative. <laughs> okay. Slight offshoot for a lookout point. We gotta do it. This so is one of those things that if we don't go, we won't know what we've missed. If we do go, we either have a spectacular failure and there's nothing to see, <laughs> or we get a view of the gate that we're gonna see anyway, <laughs> and it's probably gonna be not as good of a view. <laughs> After 15 miles, there's no avoiding cynicism. <laughs> it's like, is the glass half empty or half full? There is no glass. <laughs> you are in the desert with no water. It's looking grim. Not looking good, Bob. <clears throat> nope. Not looking great. Something up here, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whoa. Ho. Oh. Okay, this might have been worth it. Oh, ho, ho. Holy cow. That is huge. Oh, yeah. Watch out, there's spiders. What? That is a very big Tory gate. That is a sight to behold. We gazed upon Hongu Taisha's O Tori, or Great Gate, which is the largest Tory gate in the entire world. Oh, man. Wow, that view is the most I've ever felt like I've been in a video game. Oh. Like that is so just straight out of a painting or something. No, oh, it's unbelievable. Oh. You know, I see why they made today the hardest day. 
is because you finish and you see that and you're like, oh, it was worth it. Yeah. It was worth it, baby. I didn't really know what to expect in terms of the view and the Tory Gate, but Huge. it's been a spectacular view. It's amazing. Well, I hope we get to walk right through that. It feels very deserved at this point. Oh, yeah. Funny part is we probably could have driven to there. <laughs> Hit a bus for sure. <laughs> feel like this though. That's true. Let's say that. Dead inside? <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta be dead to get that rejuvenation. <laughs> you gotta die first in order to experience life. <laughs> now, we got ready to finish the final leg of today's journey to Honggu. As we neared the town, the dirt path was replaced with cobblestones. On our way, we passed by a small cemetery nestled among the cedars. And finally, the path led back out into the open. Oh, we can see the town. Fantastic. 0.4 kilometers. Oh man, we're so close. We're so close that when we get there, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with myself. Maybe just sit for a good minute. <laughs> A narrow stone staircase led down to the streets of the town, into the middle of an unassuming looking residential area. That's where we came from. Pretty unassuming looking little set of stairs. Now, we were fully surrounded by civilization. Situated along the street was another distance marker. We had finally made it to our final marker of the day. As we strolled ahead, we collected another stamp at the kiosk situated near the back entrance of Hongu Taisha, one of the three grand shrines of Kumano, which we would be visiting the next day. But we still had a ways left to go before we got to the hostel. So for now, we continued on our way. And as we descended the slope to another section of the town, we saw the giant Tory gate towering in the distance. Now we continued our search for our hostel. We're definitely well into town at this point. Oh, we were supposed to make a left. You know what? That backtracks a little bit. They both backtrack. Let's see if we can just cut straight through. One, two, three, go. Okay, they said to check in over here. But I think the actual place is somewhere else. Okay, we'll go check in and uh, we will check back in with you after that. The town bustled all around as we got checked in. Eventually, our host took us back across the street to show us our arrangements for the evening. So, we only have one shower, so here. You just press this green button, just stand it on, get a hot water, it comes in. Yeah. This bus is PB Jerry. I'll tell you for the break. From the living room, we headed upstairs to our sleeping quarters. I don't think I want to dirty up my bed yet. It's a nice privacy. <laughs> Back downstairs, I decided to sample some of the complimentary snacks left out for guests. And our host had also given us some simple vittles for the journey ahead. Okay, we got a nice little basket of goodies. Two slices of bread, four slices of bread four yogurts, and four bananas. That's some nice hostile food right there. Okay. These are okay. pretty good. I'll try that later. Let's go eat. Ready to eat? Ready to eat? Ready to eat? Ready to eat? Yeah, yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting no response here. Ready to eat, but not ready to move. <laughs> okay, we can wait for a minute. After vegging out for a bit, we headed out to find food. Okay, well, lightening our packs at least. Yeah, I feel way better. So exhausted, but I'm so glad that I'm here now. <laughs> oh, suffering is temporary. It's so hard to remember that though. As we headed down the street, we passed by the front entrance of the Kumano Hongu Taisha Grand Shrine. Here, a wooden tori gate stood tall, and nearby, paper chochin lanterns glowed in the evening sunlight. We continued down the street, passing by the massive otori, as we made our way to a local ramen shop. Gotcha. Yeah. We've been to a place like this where you put your ticket order into the machine, mm -hmm. put your coins in, and then it just pops out the order. Pretty great. Robbie had gone back to the inn to grab some stuff, but he eventually got caught up with us. Welcome. Uh, we order here. I didn't order yet. Inside, Brian and Thomas were already seated, 
laughing at the jokes the ramen chefs were making. <laughs> she's, she's a model? <laughs> We all got situated, and the chefs got to work making our bowls of ramen. Up first were Brian and Thomas's bowls. Oh man, that looks fantastic. How was it? It's great. <laughs> you definitely earned this today, Thomas. We all did. Good work. We all did. Was it 18 miles? 17.61 according to my watch. I told him we hiked uh, 21 kilometers. While we enjoyed our ramen, the next two bowls were being put together. And to go along with our noodles was some cool, crisp soda. Now, it was finally time to dig in. This is going to be the best bite of food I've ever had. I can feel it. Oishi. Honto ni oishi desu. Oishi. This is the best ramen I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Actually, though. So we got this pork bowl, it's got some pork, pickled greens, kewpie mayo, some scallions on top. I'm glad you ordered this and not me, because I don't think I can eat that much. <laughs> mm. Wow. With all the flavors combining, it almost has like a very cheesy flavor to it almost. Very umami. It's like the mayo mixed with the pickled greens and the scallions. Or my taste buds are broken, but it tastes good either way. <laughs> Dude, there's nothing like a rice bowl to really satisfy. My noodles are fantastic, but man, you just get a giant bowl of rice, put anything on it. And I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> After our amazing meal, we explored around and made our way to the giant Tory gate. What is this? This looks kind of terrifying. Kind of. Yeah, there's no railing. Just don't fall. After crossing over the strange bridge, we now entered Oyunohara, the original site of the Hongu Taisha Grand Shrine. After several of the buildings had been destroyed in a flood in the late 1800s, the remaining buildings were moved to their present location elsewhere in the town. Now, we searched around for the giant Tori gate that still stood on this site. Dude, where is it? It's so big and I haven't found it yet. <laughs> and then, through the trees, we saw the gate standing majestically above. At 34 meters or 111 feet high, Tory Gate was an impressive sight to behold. It had been a wild hike through the mountains and forests to get here, and finally, the day's long journey had come to an end. But we still had a great adventure ahead of us on the final two days of the Kumano Kodo. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. This was part two of the Kumano Kodo. We have one more part left. And if you're watching in the future, you can click right here and then watch the next one. Otherwise, we are editing it as fast as we possibly can. Huge thank you to all of our patrons. If you would also like to be a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash adventure and you get early access to the episodes, bloopers, commentaries, and live streams. And at some of the higher tiers, you can get your name in the credits or even some of the special shout outs, which you'll see in a second. If you enjoyed any of the music from the episode, you can listen to that at adventurearchives.bandcamp.com. We have t-shirts and merchandise for sale at our Teespring store, including some very nice new designs by Andrew. I'm partial to this mug that has Brian's classic phrase on it. And finally, if you wanna know any of the gear that we use in the episodes, we have a 
affiliate links for all the gear in the description below. One more thing, huge thank you to Straight Back Games for sponsoring this episode. They are an indie game studio. Another one of their games is called Devour. It is a co-op survival horror game. We played that in the shout outs. It is a hilarious good time. If you're at all interested in that, that is on Steam. But thank you once again to Straight Back Games. Huge thank you to all of our patrons for actually making this possible at all. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing. And please look forward to part three, the final part of the Kumano Koto Trail. We will edit that just as fast as we possibly can. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Our beds, Thomas up there, Brian up there. So Brian showering first. Pick a number between four. Mm -hmm. Some ice cream in this. It was a Hagen does. Ooh, nice and melted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We should got more cold drinks from that store. <laughs> <laughs> what fools we are. Wait a minute. Oh, is there one? Hey, this is Japan. There's a vending machine on every corner. It's true. In the city. <laughs> Even in a rural country town. I don't think I've ever needed a shower in one life. You should have group showers. <laughs> Actually, that'd be... I don't know how it'd feel like. At this point, like, when you reach a certain point, it's like, you don't care about anything anymore. Yeah. You're like, I will take a shower butt naked with the President <laughs> of the United States. It does not matter. Oh. Okay. What I... <laughs> The first shout out is us playing Devour from Straight Back Games. If you're at all afraid of spiders or just horror games in general, then feel free to skip to the next shout out using this timestamp. It's mostly just us laughing at each other and being scared. So either way, enjoy. This is so appropriate that this is the Japan episode. <laughs> hey, look, this is like this is like the inns we stayed in, just trashed. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go in this room over here. There's milk. Yeah, there's. I milk. want milk. You guys see the, this picture over here? Ah uh, yes, that we're gonna die. Good. I heard some loud creaking. Guys, where'd you go? Where am I? In I the don't want to play this alone. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. There's nothing. Oh. No, it was a shadow. Let's split up, uh, gang. Okay, let's go in the spider let's cave. Go. Let's not go in the spider cave. Oh, something's in here. Don't leave me. Somebody's in here. Somebody's in here. Oh, that's her. Oh. Uh-oh. Is that her? I'm going ready for to a shine closer the look. Light on her. Oh, she dropped something. Yeah. Oh. 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 Where'd she go? Oh. She's oh, crawling oh, in the hole. She's crawling in the hole. All right. Well, this is a great game, guys. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't leave me. Everybody. Oh, oh, oh spider. Oh, spider. Spider. Oh. All oh. right. Oh. Time to hide. What? Oh, oh, where are you guys? Back, back. I'm right with you. Where is that coming from? I'm hiding. I'm hiding. Oh, I got it. It's a big spider run. Oh, oh you got me. I don't know what to do. Here, here, here. <laughs> All right, I'm here. Thomas just let afraid. Brian die. Oh, look, you can see I... Brian's silhouette in the distance. <laughs> are you, where are you guys? Are you guys near the skull? Giant. What? Oh, what's happening? Oh, oh okay. Oh. It's, I think it's where behind me. Running? Where is <laughs> no. Everybody run. <laughs> One person for a closet, Thomas. I don't want to. I don't want to look. I'm. I'm looking down <laughs> at the wall. I, I, I cleanse killing. Oh, okay. I, I've got poison. Run! You don't come this way. Run! 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 run, run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she is. There she is. <laughs> Robbie's right outside my door. I'm just too afraid to leave. <laughs> if anyone sees any items on the way. Oh! Oh! Where's that? <laughs> Nope. Hey. Nope. Get that closet. Nope. nope. I'm running with Thomas. I'm just, I don't know what I'm running towards, but I'm just running with you guys. I hear oh. her voice and I'm I hiding. Hear... Oh. oh, she's right here. She's right here. Run. run, just keep running. Don't stop running. <laughs> and we're here. Ah! <laughs> Shout out to Dan Vulcans. Welcome to the X Mansion. My name is John Truitt. Or to most, Professor X. And I'm Douglas Jackson, assistant to Professor X. You've all been invited here today because of your abilities. Tell me, Mr. Um, 
What is his name? Uh, Jake Buer, sir, AKA Cyclops. Oh, let me guess. You shoot lasers out of your eyes and those goggles are the only way you can keep them from bursting out. Actually, sir, it just says here, expert at Beat Saber. Oh, very well. Next, please. This is Ren and Yvette, AKA Wolverine and Gambit. Oh, I can already tell. Wolverine, razor sharp claws and quick healing abilities. And Gambit, you throw cards at people that explode on contact. Um, no, I think those are just chopsticks. It says here that Wolverine is a cook and Gambit does card tricks. Hmm, okay. Well, who is our final candidate? Ah, oh, let me guess. Captain America. Uh, again, no, sir. This is Jasper Caps. It says here he's with the American Hiking Association of America. <laughs> Stay dirty. Want to give a special shout out to May and Gabe in Texas. I'm not in Texas, but I wish I was. Nico wants to give a shout out to Mia, saying thank you for teaching me to go outside all those years ago, and that every hike, paddle, and bike and walk has been better with you by his side. Manager Gavin Ryan, welcome to the neighborhood. We're from the North Ward Merchants Protective Society. My name's James Rakitsky. This here is Brian Kitsune. I'm kind of busy right now. Are you guys looking for a donation or something? Let him finish. You may have noticed, not to denigrate anyone, that this is a transitional neighborhood. You still got a lot of sketchy types. And we merchants have found you really should have some around-the-clock security here. Isn't that what the police are for? They do their best, but they got their hands full. Your weekly dues to us will ensure all the supplemental safety net you'll ever need. Look, I can't authorize that. It would have to go through corporate in Seattle. How do you think corporate would feel if, for the sake of argument, someone threw a brick through your window? They've got 10,000 stores in America. I, I don't think they would feel anything. What if, God forbid, it wasn't just vandalism? What if an employee, even a manager, say, was assaulted? Look, guys, every single coffee bean is in the computer and accounted for these days. I can't make any decisions without them being greenlit by the CEO, Mary Sinkavage herself. If I do something wrong or something's off, I'm gone and there's some other guy replacing me tomorrow. It's over for the little guy. Shout out to Aaron from Baltimore! Salvador Gonzalez wants to shout out to Natalia saying, I'm looking forward to many adventures with you. Yes, hello, this is the office of renowned adventurer Indianapolis Jones. Ah, George Smith, my good friend. How are you doing? Oh, you say you have an interesting tip from GreatLakesWaterCraft.com? Oh, ancient cave writings. Well, I think I will check it out. Thank you very much. Secret cave writings. All right, let's decipher these. This one here says Joey and Mella would like to give a shout out to JTech91. Thanks for keeping our adventures alive. Interesting. Huh. This one says Madeline Holly is giving a shout out to Tommy and Klaus. Happy three month anniversary. There must be another inscription somewhere. Aha. Seems like the last inscription is here. Brian and Asi Yamagata would like to shout out all the conservationists fighting the good fight to keep our beautiful earth clean. Interesting. Oh no, there seems to be a dangerous animal in this cave. Karen and Charles want to give a special shout out to their ambitious 16 year old son, Roman, for launching his own clothing line. It's Cyrus Brand with two Ds. You can find it on Instagram. Two super proud parents of coming from Alexandria, Virginia. Thank you. My name is Leon Lu Lin. 
and I'm with Expedition Research LLC. I'm at the Temple of Su in Tan, and I'm seeking the legendary tuber, the Super Spud. Shout out to Jason Bourgeois. Here's to a better 2024 than 2023. Lace us out, mother Shout out to Sanwar One. Step out, step out, step out, step out of my expo chef now. We're firing 76 Sunjan Huangs, 34 Christina Alvarez's, 12 bangers, 12 mash, now. We've got one more shout out to David Dickerson saying love you from Ginger. <laughs> Mellow out man. You can't talk business with you waving guns in people's faces. Your family is safe, Colonel Steve Horgan. Sarah Wright and Sven are both safe, as are Tim, Nikki, Liam, Serenity, and Chewie. They're headed to Ireland, but whether they make it is up to you. My people got some business with you, and if you want your family back, then you better cooperate. Right? Wrong. So, a little after the pass up there, I felt the sharp sharp sting in my bottom, sorry. In my bottom? 